What's up guys, Michael Dunham here from XMD. As you know, we just released the Toolbox 2.0. Now, okay, okay, I'll wait for you to finish clapping. Man, has it been a long time coming. We've been in development for about a year and a half, and it is jam-packed with new features and even a complete UI overhaul. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Toolbox in its entirety and go over the interface and show you all the new features along the way. So with that, let's jump right in. Let's go ahead and run it. Do, do, do. Now here you will put in your license key and everybody that's purchased a lifetime membership in some way, in some form, have a license key. That's also in the documentation how to find it. So once you put in your license key, all right, here you will have your different sources from your license key, you know, XMD source, Gumroad, floating or other. Other is ArtStation, FlipNormals, CubeRush, or anywhere else you may have bought it at some point. Um, they'll be in your library, you'll have your license. For floating, this is for studio licenses, which we offer now. If you have a studio, you want all your employees that are using ZBrush to have a license. We have a floating license that you can have a certain amount of seats and you can activate, deactivate each computer as you work. So with that, we're going to hit check. That's going to check your license. It'll give you a green check if it's correct. It'll give you a red X and say it's invalid if not. And then you want to find your ZBrush version. So I'm on 6.4 at this moment. Accept the license. You can read the license here. Um, if you, if for some reason this can't detect your version, you can always select it manually here. Just choose the root of your ZBrush install. So we're going to hit install. If you have ZBrush open, like I do, you're going to have to close it. Once you close it, then you can reopen it. All right, now that we have it open, all right, so what I like to do with ZBrush is get it down to about here. Don't run it full screen. So whenever you Whenever you open up the toolbox, you're pretty much going to get this view. So what you can do is collapse these down with these little arrows, and you're going to get about this view. So adjust your ZBrush according to this, and that way you pretty much have a docked UI. We can't actually dock it to the UI because they don't really allow that in ZBrush. Uh, with an external plugin. So, with that, I'm going to open up, let's just throw in a sphere. So, the good thing about the new version, I just want to show you this because this was the most requested feature of anything else that we've done other than the Mac version is this little button right here, icon size. And I know they're tiny, 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 but ZBrush, it already compresses them. But with this, now you get bigger. But wait, do you want bigger? Oh yeah. Now you can actually see your icons they're all in display. You can see them. They're nice and big. Don't ask for bigger. It's about as big as it's going to get. Here's another thing. Now you have list view, little detail view that shows you everything that you need to know about your brushes. Eventually we'll get these where you can, um, sort by these types, but for now, 
this is the starting point. And here we go. So quick overview of the interface. You have your brush panel here. Whenever you open it up, all your brushes that you have loaded. Here you have your alphas. You have textures. You have materials. Fiber. Tools. Lights. I know it's empty. I'll get to that in a minute. And projects. So now you can load a ton of different toolbox file types and not just brushes and alphas. You also have ZBrush user interface, layout, and color. So in here you can go through all the default ones and inside of layout you have all your default layouts. We'll go on how to add your own in just a few. You also can load macros straight from this box right here. So the good thing about the collapsing of each of these panels is if you want to have your favorites over here and then keep these out as well, then you could just drag your interface over a little bit and have a little more room. Or you can collapse it and bring it out whenever you want without having to bring out your entire brush palette. If you go and select a brush, inside of your properties, you can set a description, a category, tags, set the type, and you'll be able to see credit of whoever created it if there is credit on the brush. So for instance, uh, if you use the deco brush for sculpting dragons and you use it all the time, then in your description, you might say, I use this all the time for sculpting dragons. And let's say we use the insert omni chain this is great for clothing ornament. Ornaments. Now for categories, let's say we want to create a category for damage. This category for, for damage, you select it, you click damage, click damage, Click damage. Now, anytime that you go into your filters, you'll see damage here. You can filter by damage. Now you can also create tags. So tags are great for like just another way of filtering. If you want to create tags for, you know, like if you want to do cracks, if you want to do hair, if you want to do smoothing, maybe quick selection for carving. Like if you want to carve in crevices on stuff, there's plenty of great brushes for that. Uh, maybe chisels, you know, just different, uh, anything you want to tag. Uh, it's kind of like a cloud tag on a website. If you have just a bunch of keywords. Um, inside of here, these are already set for all of my brushes and all the ZBrush brushes, but you can select types. So I created a ton of different types for every type of brush there is. So whenever you go into your filter menu, you can filter by type. So these are great if you want to show all of your mallets, which uh, you may not have even known that there's three because I believe two of them aren't even in the UI. Um, if you want to show all the move brushes, there's a ton of move brushes. 
Let's see, this brings up uh, showing the filter menu. So in the filter menu, you have, for brushes, each uh, ZBrush type is different. So in your brushes, you have brush types, you have XMD categories, you have user categories, and you have your tags. So filter, let's see, I don't think I select anything for any tags, but every file type you go to, there is different types of filters. So these are great for alphas. Um, you got your resolution, your alpha, you have your bit, and you have if it has been ignored, which I will show you what that means. So whenever you have an alpha, and let's say you have um, some reference or textures or icons or something in there with it, uh, you don't want them to be counted as alphas. So if you see one in here that doesn't belong, you can click this little button right here and that will ignore it. So then whenever you go into your filter, if you accidentally click one, you can click that, you can filter and you can unignore. So that's a great way to organize uh, all of your alphas and everything. So we'll go into textures. So textures, you're only filtering by category or tags. There's not really much to filter for textures. Uh, materials, same thing. I believe the rest of them are all the same as well. All right, next I'm going to show you how to create a favorite set. In here, if you click one of these stars, it will add it to your current favorite set. By default, you have a default favorite set. So the good thing about 2.0 is that you can add whatever you want into the favorite set. I know, look at that, that's awesome. So say you're working on this project and you use all these different things, you can add them all to one favorite set and easily be able to browse to them and use them while you're working. So the cool thing is that you can actually rearrange these. You can drag them around, you can put them wherever you want. Now, if you're working on multiple projects, which everybody is, you have a million different things going, or you have another idea that you want to try out a bunch of different things on, so you can actually create another brush set, and we'll call this Dragon, and create a color for it. I say stay in the mid-tones so it's not too bright over here on the tabs. You'll see if you start creating some that are too bright, I'll show you and see if you want to test, you go in here, let's make that nice and bright red. Yeah, like it'll blind you. So the best thing to do is keep it the mid-tone colors and you can create as many as you want. I don't think there's a limit. I haven't broken it yet. Um, it'll give you this a scroll ability to scroll between them once you get longer than two columns here. So once you create your new favorite set, you can add whatever you want to your favorite set. We'll add some dragon stuff. Go into the alphas, scroll down, let's see. It's a good one, good one, good one. All right, and then Maybe under textures, I'm going to use this. Go to material. Say, like, while you're working on this one, you, you know, you like it to be nice and shiny metal. All right, so now that you have everything loaded in, all you got to do, double click on a brush or an alpha or fiber or change shader. Oh, look at that, you. The next thing that you need to know is your settings. So bring up your settings. So here's one thing. If you are using a Wacom, you probably, or Wacom, or Wacom, or whatever the hell you want to call it. If you are using a Wacom, 
and you want to be able to easily click your brushes because double clicking with a pen sucks. So we have this feature right here for single click select. Makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker. Um, you can also turn off tooltips. You can turn off the XMD category if you don't use XMD brushes, which why wouldn't you? Because it's crazy. Automatic updating toolbox. You don't ever want to update. You don't have to. We're not going to support you if you're not updated, but you have the ability to turn it off. You didn't used to, but now you do. If you want to change your color scheme of the toolbox, you can do that. I have a bunch of different ones. Change it to whatever you want. Um, you can import your database from version one of the toolbox. If you have a ton of crap set up, you can import all your information in. You may have to reset up your paths. If your paths have changed or anything, um, like you move from one PC to another, the paths are probably aren't going to be the same. So you probably need to go in here and change those. So that's where the locations come in. Let's say you want to load brushes from another location. All right, so you want to load in your, wherever you organize all your stuff. What I recommend, do not put any of your stuff in with the XMD stuff because there could be naming issues or whatever. Um, if you have brushes that aren't XMD. So make your other area outside of the XMD folder. Um, I'll show you where that is in a minute. And organize all your stuff there. Um, you don't have to put XMD stuff in here because you can grab it all from the library if you have a premium membership, which I definitely recommend. Grabbing the uh, premium membership lifetime. You can get all the... 1500 brushes from XMD, download them straight into the toolbox. It's amazing. So, um, what I'm going to do here, I think, uh, yep. So, we're loading brushes. Um, got the awesome ore brush pack here. You can get it off of uh, Michael Vicente's Gumroad if you want. So, now that I've loaded those in, you can go ahead and close your settings. So you scroll down and find all orb stuff. Um, you can also search for it here. So if you want to, you can go in and set up all of these yourself. Since they're not XMD, you would have to add whatever type it is. Um, you can add your own category stuff to them as well. Uh, I recommend you know, go ahead and setting all this up for all of the non-XMD. And that way you keep everything nice and organized. I'm going to show you the lights. So by default, ZBrush does not have any lights that are outside of the interface saved. So in your startup folder, if you look under lights, there are none. So what I like to do is go in here take this light, the default light, and save it. And then what that does is whenever you come in here, go into your settings, go into lights, add location for the lights. So once you add that, I have some extra ones in there, but the default one is in there. So if you go in, you screw up all your lights and everything, you can always go back to the default. It's awesome. It's easy. Go in here, see, ooh, pretty light. And then you can always go back to the default. All right, so another cool feature that we brought over from 1.0 is the mini mode. You want to go down to an itty bitty little tiny thing where you only show your favorites, you don't show anything else, you can't get to anything else unless you get out of this mode, then that is a great way to work, save in or, or save a space on your desktop. Um, you also have the keep on top, 
So if you have your, you know, ZBrush maximized, you have, so you have this pulled out over here and you don't have anything here. And then you could actually set the toolbox on top of this area if you wanted to. So um, you would definitely want to keep, keep on top on top of there. Now, what I want to show you next is the settings in here. If you have your own layouts um, saved, then they're going to show up in this list. You can also rename them if you want. You can't rename the default ones because that tends to break things if you start renaming ZBrush's uh, default things. So we don't allow that, but your other ones, you can rename them to whatever you want. And that actually renames the file itself. So be wary of that. Um, you can add your location of your layouts, your library. This is the download location of anything you download out of the library. So let me show you the library is this little book icon right here. Click that. And ooh, brings up the store. It's actually not really the store. It only works if you have a premium membership. So once you log in with your premium membership, you can download anything from the xmdsource.com website straight into the toolbox. Let's say, hey, I want the landscape generator. Hey, I just click download. Hey, look at that. I can just clickety click, click, download anything I want. And depending on your internet connection, apparently mine's really slow right now. So all of this stuff is going to download slow as crap. Landscape generator is also huge. So once it downloads, it will start processing. It'll unzip and throw it into a folder and okay so once you download that you can also go into a detailed mode for each of these you can click library to go back you can look at whatever's in here you can actually download these individually if you want let's go into brush go into filter you can see all the new stuff that's downloaded is now in here so, here's another cool feature that some people may not even know that used uh, Toolbox 1.0, that you can middle mouse click on anything and see where it's located on your drive, which is very handy, especially if you were using a bunch of textures or reference or whatever you're using. All right, so now that we've gone over the entire interface, all the features, uh, don't believe I missed anything, I'm going to show you this awesome thing right here, the help documentation. Your installation documentation, how to install for the Mac, for the PC, the portable version. All right, this will explain to you where you get your license keys. for each of the different markets. This explains how to install floating licenses. If you have studio license, um, this is normal key installation. Here are system requirements. Then we've got the awesome user guide. So in the user guide, you guys are everything that I went over and probably a lot more. And I've started the detailed reference at the start of this video, eventually it will get finished. That has very detailed reference of, of everything that has to do currently with the alpha panel, but it'll have the same thing for every one of the panels. So that is the amazing documentation that I'm working on and we also have a link to XMD source. So you can click that. It'll bring up the web page. 
and you can find out tons of information on here. We also have a new gallery, which you can view a bunch of work from XMD users. Then we have the Beta User Gallery, the XMD Academy Student Gallery, and Members Gallery. If you want to add some stuff to the gallery, just email me, send me a message on Facebook, I'll add you to it. Um, you also got the release notes for everything that we've done for the toolbox so far, and I will continue to update this forever. Let's see what else. We have a link to XMD Academy, which is XMD's amazing learning center. We have a mentorship going on right now, um, and we will, for the foreseeable future, continue to do those. We have on-demand classes. And you also have this little bell icon where you can show, uh, see if you're up to date, check for updates. You can set where you automatically update, and you can also check the release notes. And then finally, we have buy us a cup of coffee. If you feel like this is so valuable to you that you want to give us billions of dollars, you can do it right there. All right, and the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is the studio licenses. So now we have a feature for floating licenses for studios. If you work in a studio or you own a studio or you're an art director, whatever, you can grab a license for all your ZBrush users, um, however many seats you need. They can be activated, deactivated, uh, straight through uh, your install on the toolbox, on the website. And all you gotta do, go onto the website, fill out a form, and it'll contact me and I'll set you up. And it also comes with the entire brush library set you get access to the Facebook group, a ton of different features. It is amazing. We've already got several studios that are on it. So if you'd like that, just contact me through the form on the website, which I will show you right here. Go to the main page, scroll down, studio licensing, find out more. Click that, fill this out, and we'll get you set up. So do not forget to read the documentation. It will tell you everything you need to know to get started. Hopefully this video helped. I believe we went over all the features now that actually there is one more feature that I want to tell you really quick. If you go into the documentation, we'll go over here. We're going to go to hotkeys. We have hotkeys. You can toggle between asset panels. You can cycle next favorite set, toggle mini mode, reset all your brushes inside of ZBrush. If, say, you every time you click one, it loads it in, and there is a cap inside of ZBrush of 300 brushes, but all you got to do is click this and it resets it. Um, you can set focus uh, on the search box, toggle your favorites, and clear all filters. So let me show you these real quick. Um, if you want to toggle between asset panels, control B or command B, and you can easily just go straight through them all. Cycle next favorite set, control W, command W, go through these. And I'd say the most handy one out of all is your so you have a bunch of stuff selected. You got some categories selected. Alright, so you wanna clear all that. All you gotta do, control Y, Command Y, and clear. I would say thank you very much for watching this video. If you made it all the way through, I applaud you. Good job. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. If you want uh, to 
If you don't have the toolbox yet, you want to check it out, go to xmdsource.com. If you want some training for ZBrush or Photoshop, go to xmdacademy.com. And thanks for watching.